We've got more tools over here. We're gonna use the Geo H airbrush. We're gonna go to a frame where my eyebrow is raised. So it's down here and then it raises up there. With the Geo H airbrush on, we set our brush size thusly. I'm gonna leave it kind of smallish. The flow is set at one and the strength at 100. Let's set the flow all the way up to two. Oh, and you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn off the object because I don't need to see that and I'm gonna hide handles. So now you can see I'm just painting really grossly. I'm painting weights on here. These are too big, but I just want you to see that what happens is Control key to reduce the weight painting. And I'm gonna shrink that down and I'm gonna paint that one up a little bit. Paint that one up a little bit. Paint that one down a little bit. Great. So I've overpainted this, the, the influence of the of the bone, which is really just the object. I call it bones because I've been doing 3D for 20 years and bone paint weighting is just kind of naturally what comes to me. But anyway, we can see here, look at that. Here, I'll, I'll paint even a little more under here. And make this a little bigger and paint even a little more under here, just so we can really see what's happening. So, control key is remove paint and the uh, left mouse button with no control key is add weight. So it's just like bone paint waiting. If you've done that before in a 3D app, this should come very naturally to you. There. So now we can see those, those uh, vertices are being influenced by the object underneath it. Let's discuss some other things. We've got brush surface and brush through. I'm gonna turn on brush through for a moment while I drop the flow back down to a more reasonable one. And I'm gonna reduce the weight on these a little bit because it's kind of funky. Let's zoom in. Get those to come down a bit. Before when I was painting so grossly, that was really more for illustrative purposes. Let's try and do this a little more legit style. So with brush through, you're painting all the way through the mesh, much like we discussed in the smudge tool. So if you have brush through on, and you're gonna start painting on these, you're gonna actually assign weights to vertices on the other side of the object. Um, I'll do that right now. Oh, look at that. You can suddenly see a bunch of uh, vertices become uh, visible through the object. That's because they suddenly had a weight assigned to them. So you have to be careful about that. Uh, I'm setting it back to brush surface. I'm gonna reduce brush size and I'm going to reduce the weights a little bit here along that area a little bit there a little bit there turn it up a little bit and shrink that down there we go really reduce that actually you know what I want these to be a little higher so when you're doing these fine painting that's when you want your uh, your brush um, flow to be lower, but when you're doing the gross stuff, you just set the brush flow to be higher. And I always leave the strength at one, 100%. You could set it lower to peg it at a, a lower value, but I find that's not my, not my style. Okay, let's get some of these in here. That's better, good. So I'm gonna call that done. Okay. It's all also best to do these this weight painting at various poses. Oh, hang on. 
what you just saw there was me painting on the object. So these are omission vertices for doing geometry based tracking. You really have to be careful about what object you have selected here. So I'm gonna select that object and reduce some of the weight here. Zoom down, zoom out and pan down. That's basically it. That's the gist of it. Now, I realize that uh, I'm only doing the soft tracking on one little section of my face here, and it seems like a very simple section. Let's open up my earlier scene with, you know, my hands going all through it and being all crazy. Let's let the frames cache a little bit here. But if you remember in this scene, you know, let's orbit around so we can see the complexity of this scene. And we'll collapse these trackers so we can see all of what we have going on here. Your scenes can get really complex when you do this. So you've got all kinds of objects. You've got eyebrow, uh, this eyebrow object, eyebrow right. And you've got the jaw object, object jaw, eyebrow left, cheek right, cheek left, object hairline. So what is the tracker for that? That's up here, my hairline, object nose. Let's look at the tracker for that. There's the tracker at the tip of my nose. So I am tracking, I'm doing deformation tracks on so many different things. Uh, I'm gonna pan up a little bit here and look at the jaw. Really, look at how everything I've got here is really well named. Object jaw, the tracker is named tracker jaw, so that we know that that is associated with the object jaw. Now, the, the object jaw, let's look at how this is being solved. If you look, if you remember from what we did with my face in that other shot, we were solving X and Z. Well, in this shot, we're solving tilt and roll. And that's because if you see the way my jaw moves, like look, look in the bottom viewport here. If you look at the way my jaw moves, I'm intentionally unhinging my jaw here. And you can rotate it a little bit. It can get a little uncomfortable, so don't do it too much. <laughs> Let's expand this view out a little bit. If you look at what the temporomandibular joint is doing, let's, let's hide everything else. This is also useful. The jaw, object jaw, the tracker for it is on my chin. So I only have one tracker there. I could have tracked more features on my chin and fed them into the solution. I didn't, but it all depends on really what you're trying to do. This was one of the first shots I did, and so it was really a kind of a proof of concept. But looking at that one tracker, that one tracker is solving for the object jaw up here. And the object jaw, let's turn off height handles. So you can see that it's solving around the rotation of the x-axis, which would be tilt, and a bit around the roll, which is the y-axis in green there. So we, our jaw is rotating around. And, and then you can see the vertex weights that I've painted for that object, which really are limited to this area down here and the jaw area there. So just using those point tools, all I can tell you at this point is you should just experiment with this yourself. There are a lot more tools to get into. This is the simplicity of the, the beginnings of it. Uh, and I hope that helps to understand how these tools work.